<laughs> it looks like we have a full contingent. What do you say we start on time? Yeah. Sure. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to the sixth meeting for 2019 for the Bitcoin Cash programmers and uh, protocol programmers, developers. And just to go over basics uh, before we do introductions, the goal of the meeting is to share information that may help with planning for the upcoming upgrade and to start the discussion on the November upgrade, which will be November of 2019. So without any further ado, I'll do introductions, starting on my top left with Mark, please. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Lundeberg. Um... Uh, I'm a Bitcoin Cash developer. I've been helping out with the uh, Schnorr signatures for the May upgrade. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Jason B. Cox. Hi, I'm a software engineer. Uh, my name is Jason. I contribute to Bitcoin ABC. I've been primarily taking care of uh, releases and security. Thank you, Jason. Amri? Yeah, I'm Amri Sushi. I'm the lead developer of Bitcoin ABC. Okay, thank you. Andrea? Hi, I'm Andreas, who's a Bitcoin Limited developer. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, Chris? Yeah, Chris Casey, uh, I work on the uh, BCHD uh, full node. Great. Well, uh, the small group today, and it's probably going to be a relatively short meeting. Uh, Armory, your microphone could be up a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure if it's too far away from your mouth, but just uh, I had a note on that. So getting started, um, we're going to talk about uh, four big items for today, the testing report and the upgrading for upgrade of the testnet usage. And we're going to talk about none, item number two, node implementation and other software upgrade plans and the schedule. Um, more details to follow. And then the network upgrade awareness, um, some detail on that. And then of course the November upgrade itself. Um, and we'll talk specifically about the timelines and deadlines for the November upgrade. Um, so I'll start with um, the testing report and the upgrade to the testnet usage. Um, just gonna take a guess, Jason, is that your bulk? Um, but not a lot has changed uh, since the last time we talked about it. Uh, we did a bunch of tests on the testnet um, for segregate recovery and Schnorr. Uh, everything checked out well. Uh, we still invite people to come test on the testnet. The testnet's running 24-7. Um, there's not a whole lot else to say uh, other than we do want businesses coming and testing their software on it you know, well in advance of the upgrade to make sure they're prepared. And we're willing to help answer questions and help with that testing if need be. Okay. And do they know how and where they can test their software for the upgrade? Uh, yes, there should be a link uh, on bitcoinabc.org. It's near the top of the page uh, for testnet information. Excellent. Thank you. Um, there's an explorer now available for testnet. Is that correct? Yeah. I think that's the one new development, which is that imaginary username. He set up a, a, an explorer for the test net. So you can go on there. You can look at all the Schnorr transactions and whatnot, if you can find them. And uh, yeah. OK. Uh, and we have a link for that as well? Uh, yeah. If it's not in the test net information, I guess we should add it soon. Uh, I'm not sure if it's there. We'll put it in the, in the uh, show notes for today's meeting. Um, OK. Uh, anything further on testnet? Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is node implementation and other software upgrade plans and the schedule. So the, the, the extended note on this is, is it known when others expect to release an upgrade client and which non-full node software is expected to require development work? For example, wallets, explorers, and exchanges. Uh, anybody want to tackle that? Uh, wallet should not need to do much unless they want to use Schnorr signature, but otherwise, you know, uh, <laughs> they can continue to work the way they, they used to work so far. 
Um, yeah. Not software would need to be upgraded, but essentially anything that doesn't check the signature doesn't need to be upgraded. Okay. So are you guys aware of wallets that are using the Snorch signature? What if they think yeah, it does not work very well right now? <laughs> no, but maybe, I, maybe I shouldn't be asking the questions. Uh, well, I, I, made yeah, a, I made a test wallet that uses uh, Schnorr signatures in Electron Cash just for the test net, but it's not the, it's not like ready for, you know, ready for actual usage, let's say. Okay. Um, so my recommendation for any wallet developers who might be listening is um, once the Schnorr signatures do get activated in May, of course you can start using them right away. Um, but uh, there's not necessarily any rush to do that because as uh, Amari was saying, the ECDSA signatures will continue to work perfectly fine. And um, yeah, uh, that's basically it. Uh, we have the um, BCH wallet code is a um, wallet client that is, um, I guess, part of the, the BCHD project. So un unlike the, the Bitcoin D, this is a, the wallet segregated from, from, the, uh, from the node software. And i um, probably going to switch that to you, Shinor, after, after May. I'll do a release on that. And then we're using that BCH wallet code in an Android app that that probably, I don't know if it'll be out before May or not, but if anything, I'll switch that over to Schnorr fairly early too. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I was thinking it might be good if the various wallets tried to coordinate just because there's a sort of a, it's a small privacy leak if you're running like the only wallet that uses Schnorr. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point, yeah. So. Yeah. But if we can get Electron Cash and BCHD and ABC and a few of wallet to do it right away, then it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we can start bugging also wallet. I'm pretty sure Bitcoin.com will do it fairly soon as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know if we should like arrange an, you know, an official like activation day where the wallets automatically switch over on June 1st yeah, it's or something. May that would be the most private, clean way to do it, but the easy way. No, is it's not going to happen. Like if you do that, what's going to happen is that you're going to create a shedding point around not using it. <clears throat> hmm, interesting. Is is that a philosophical observation, Omri? Or well, this is this is all things work. Um, if you're like, everybody needs to do something at the same time to make it happen, and we're going to wait for everybody to do it, then there's always going to be some buggers that, you know, is not doing it that everybody is waiting after. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the key thing is to try to get the major players, Electron Cash. Uh... Yeah, so the way you do that is that you minimize the effort required to do it. And so any kind of like complicated process with the activation date and whatever, it's going to complicate the process. Uh, I see. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So wall wallets will talk to wallets and it will happen eventually. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other comments on uh, that aspect of node implementation and software upgrade plans and schedule? Um, only a minor note on that. Uh, for those upgrading Bitcoin ABC software, uh, they need to upgrade to 0.19.x. Uh, we're still continuing to do biweekly releases, so any of those version numbers would be good for the May upgrade specifically. Okay. So in other words, if you're running 0.18.x, then you won't... You will need to upgrade, upgrade yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good information. Uh, any other comments on that aspect of discussion? No? I'll move on to the third item on the agenda, network upgrade awareness. Um, question here, is the global ecosystem aware of the upcoming upgrade, and is there understanding of the work that needs to be done? What do developers and others need to do now or later to make sure the network is ready on May the 15th? 
a high-level overview on that? Well, I think the last item kind of touched on this a bit. You know, the, the wallet developers are aware um, for working on Schnorr. Um, as far as I know, the uh, miners exchanges that we've talked to are aware. Would you say there's good communication going on right now with them? Uh, I would ones. say. Sorry, Armin didn't Yeah, it, it, he said it yeah, depends I, which ones. It depends which ones, though. Okay. So you're getting some broad coverage for the Bitcoin Cash upgrade in May. That's what I'm saying. It's worth noting that this upgrade is uh, like less less comprehensive than the last one because the last time we had to get various block explorers and Electromex servers and all these things upgraded as well for the C tour, and this time that's that sort of change is not required. So, okay, so good. They're very few changes. So May will be a smoother type of upgrade. Definitely. Well, move on to the next item, which I think is the uh, one that. Some people have at the top of their list of things to think about, and that is the November upgrade. So, uh, Mark, I know that you've got some things you wanted to bring forward on this, so why don't we start with you on that? Uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, sort of describe them at a high level. So I, uh, what I'd like to work on is getting uh, the malleability, the third-party malleability fixes done for the paid public key hash standard transactions. So there's one... There's one small fix that needs to be done still, which is um, uh, basically forcing people to use the, the minimal push data in a script sig. Uh, and yeah, on a high level, what that means is you're, you can only spend an input in one way if it's a paid to public key hash input. So uh, that's, that has a lot of benefits and it's a fairly small change. So I'd really like to have that in November. And the second thing is uh, sort of going back to the, the Schnorr wallets. Uh, there's one thing we didn't upgrade it in May, which is uh, opcheck multisig. So if you're doing a multisig wallet, you're going to be stuck using ECDSA uh, even after May. Hmm. And, and this is really an ideal situation because maybe you'd like to write a wallet software that only uses Schnorr signatures, and that's just not going to be possible, right? So we'd like to finish the upgrade by making an object multisig that can use Schnorr as well. And there's some technicalities there that I just, I just don't want to get into. It's a long story, but if people are interested in, in this, uh, I would recommend to join the Schnorr uh, work group. Uh, and we can add a link in the description of the video. That would be great. Uh, and that's a Telegram group as well? Yes. OK, great. We'll make sure that link gets included. Um, um, for the for the multi multi sig changes, is that going to require null dummy as well? Because that was being worked on for this upgrade, but didn't make it. Yeah, so uh, it it'll be it'll be actually independent of uh, null dummy. The way it, the way it'll be done again, it's it's quite a long story uh, to get into all the details, but sure. null dummy would also be a good thing to implement because that will remain a malleability mechanism for ECDSA uh, multi sig. Uh, inputs and like with the uh, the thing I was talking about with paid to public key hash once we have both of those things the null dummy and the the script sig minimal push then the multi-sig inputs will also be immune to third-party malleability so that covers the two major classes of transactions I would say that we see on the blockchain so that would be pretty great I think great. thank you Mark any other questions from Mark on this Hearing none, uh, just move on to um, other. Uh, Jason, do you have anything that's uh, in the pipe for Nove the November upgrade that hasn't been mentioned yet? Um, no, other than null dummy, um, the malleability fix that Mark's working on, those are the ones that come to mind at the moment. Uh, I'm still working on some like non-protocol changes at the moment. I'm sure more will come up, but, you know, more proposals will come in over the next couple of months. You seem to be pretty good with a stopwatch. Maybe you could give us an idea of what the timelines and deadlines are for the November upgrade. Um, let's see. November upgrade should be, is that an August 15th deadline, if I remember correctly? 
Um, that would be the code freeze date. So we highly encourage people to submit their proposals well in advance. That means today. Um, we can talk them over, talk about details. Uh, we can, uh, we want, we would like to see a spec, uh, you know, well in advance of any changes being written. And then those changes need to be finished by August 15th. Okay. All right. Anybody want to add to the timelines and deadlines for November? Is there anything else that we should be aware of at this point? Yeah, I think that I will work on the transaction size limit. Uh, like I promised for the last, the, 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 the coming May fork, but they didn't manage to get in, to, to get work on it, and I will for the next one. And in the meantime, uh, Mark discovered another use case for, for a transaction lower than 64 bytes, sort of. They, but they, uh, the, all, all of them are just technicalities, but it is something that I plan to work on. Excellent. So we'll be looking forward to the details to come through for that from you, Andrea. I uh, just want to remind people, okay. the, sorry, I uh, just want to remind people in the audience that if you have any questions, feel free to put, post them in the, with the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, uh, and we'll make sure they get answered towards the end. Um, Chris, do you have anything specific that you are looking forward to for the November upgrade? Um, no, not, not particularly. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> um, all right. Then the other question that comes up is how can people get involved and contribute to the next planned uh, network upgrade? Um, what's the easiest way to make contact? Or the, the, there's a couple of ways, I'm sure. So maybe, Jason, you could give us that again. Sure. There's a lot of ways that you can get in contact with us. Um, email is easy. Um, I'm Jason B. Cox at BitcoinABC.org. Um, you can contact me. You can contact us on Telegram. Um, there are various Slack channels you can contact us through. Uh, I guess email would be the easiest. So we, then we can direct you to you know whichever Telegram group or... Um, whatever chat channel you need to be in in order to discuss particular changes or getting help with the test center, what have you. Okay, that's great. Um, anything further on the timelines? <clears throat> um, no, but I'd, I'd like to add something. If you want to contribute, the thing is you're going to require effort from also partly to evaluate whatever you're proposing and review the code and everything. So you need to make sure that first you have like very precise motivation and requirement for whatever you're going to propose. Also, why is there is no yardstick to judge any kind of solution against? Um, and it's gonna cause everybody to lose a ton of time. And, and maybe even it's gonna be, it may cause a good idea to be you know left aside just because it's not quite clear um what's what the goals are um and and second you need to you know have a reasonable commitment to it because if you're gonna start something you know push it to a reasonable level then other people are not gonna do it right and so if you drop the ball before actually delivering then your impact on the project is gonna be negative right and you might as well do nothing because uh, everybody else is gonna spend time reviewing whatever you're doing, everybody is, uh, you know, not going to do it themselves because they, you, you essentially, you know, uh, uh, stand up and, and said you would be doing it. So, so uh, make, make sure you have the, the kind of commitment that that's required to, you know, lead the, lead the, the future to termination. Okay. Yeah. And to add to that, once you have an idea of exactly the sort of impact you want to make and why, a good starting place is um, we have developer notes and contributing notes uh, in the Bitcoin ABC repository. That should be a good place to get started. Um, we do our reviews through Fabricator and all this stuff. And some people go on GitHub and they're not really sure, you know, how they get code review. Well, we do it on reviews.bitcoinabc.org. And it's important to have all that stuff set up um, along with your proposal so that you can start getting code reviewed quickly. Right. 
So this is the time to do the preparation for anything that would be um, suggested for the November upgrade for Bitcoin Cash. Yes. If, if, if I may add to, to you guys uh, about ABC and the GitHub repo, is it possible to close the PR queue or the uh, issues queue so that people are forced to use uh, Fabricator rather than posting PR on GitHub? And wasting time for everybody. I'm, I'm not sure if it is possible, but I wonder if. I don't know. So I, I looked into it. Unfortunately, this is not a feature that GitHub supports. People have been asking for it for years and kind of just been ignored. Um, I go through the queue once in a while and I try to pull in things that look valuable, but um, it it's it's difficult because there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of garbage kind of on there and people just asking questions and I, I don't really have the time, time to go on there, you know, every a couple times a week to, to clear it up. But I, I try to do my best. Yeah. No, I was wondering if, if you, if it were possible to, to somewhat close the door there to people to submit things will yeah, force people to use the correct menu and also uh, you are not forced to waste your time and go through it. Yeah, I, as far as I know, there's no way to enforce this. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, are, are you guys aware of uh, other things that are being worked on? And um, can people contribute to um, some upcoming changes? So I know, Mark, you've got a lot of stuff on the go right now, and Chris as well. Are there things that you're looking for help with? Specifically, no. Um, I think for the things I'm planning to work on, I think I think they're not too complicated, and I can take care of them myself. Um, yeah. I, I, actually, I did want to bring up one thing just tangentially, which is uh, uh, Emil is not here today. I guess he's feeling a bit sick or something. But um, in the last meetings, he was uh, talking about the. Um, the 25 unconfirmed transaction limit. So I think the intention there is to get it in November's upgrade that everyone will remove this limit. But uh, I'm not sure how likely that is, like how much work is being done on that. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. So it's maybe just worth reminding again that this is still to be done. Okay. So I can elaborate on that in a general way. Um, there's a lot of non-protocol work that needs to be done in order to apply those child pays for parent changes cleanly. Um, we definitely can use help there. Like pull, pulling in backports, um, deglobalizing a lot of the variables. Uh, we have a lot of global state in, in the code base that needs to be deglobalized. Uh, these sorts of things we can use help on. Um, there's never you know, too many hands working on this. So. That that's something that needs to be done in order to make sure the child pays for parent can be done cleanly. Because right now, the the mempool code is it kind of has its fingers everywhere and um, making the division of responsibility clean between the mempool and a lot of the other modules is really important to make sure that this change can be easily done. So that's something that has been fixed in the uh, Bitcoin core. Uh, um, not necessarily, but some of the backports do help with that. Um, and so as we pull in these backports, it becomes easier to continue like this deglobalization effort that we're doing. Um, and so a lot of these refactors are facilitated by some of these backports and doing backports is a relatively mechanical process. Um, it does require keeping a close eye on the changes you're making because some of them don't quite apply to the uh, Bitcoin cash implementation, uh, you know, like RBF and things like that. But um, it, it, we definitely can use help there. Like there's, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of backports still uh, on our, on our list. Chris, I noticed wow. you had, you had your hand up there as well. Yeah. I mean, we don't have, I don't think I have anything like specific to this upgrade that we could use help with, but I mean, just in, in general, if there are go developers out there, um, you know, we're certainly happy to have contributions. I think maybe one of the biggest things that I'd like to get in, that's probably the most difficult is the, um, like compact blocks and then maybe even looking forward something like X or graphene. 
but um, we don't even have the basic compact blocks in in, uh, in BCHD at this point. So that that's something that would be a nice little project for someone to take on. These sound like reasonable requests and uh, we're good to get them out there. I just want to give the people in the audience an opportunity to uh, ask questions because I think we're going to wind down. This is another approximately half hour meeting. So thank you very much for attending today and uh, we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks Bye. guys. Ciao, Bye. ciao. Goodbye everybody. Thank you. Take care.